This video is about Boolean formulas and the Boolean satisfiability problem. Imagine you are organizing a party. Unfortunately, inviting all of your friends is not an option due to many constraints. In this example, Alice will not come to the party unless her friend, Bob, is also invited. We can write this constraint as, if Alice comes, then Bob should also come. Equivalently, either Alice doesn't come, or Bob comes. Moreover, Bob and Charlie don't get along, so you can not invite both of them to the party. We write this as, either Bob doesn't come, or Charlie doesn't come. Is there a way to organize the party such that all constraints are satisfied? Putting the constraints together, we get an example of the so-called Boolean satisfiability problem. Before diving into SAT, we first need to formally introduce Boolean formulas and the satisfiability problem. To define a Boolean formula, we will need two ingredients. First, we need a set of so-called Boolean variables, usually denoted with x1, x2, x3, and so on. Each variable denotes a truth value, meaning that it can be either true or false. Sometimes we write these as 1 and 0. The second ingredient are logical operators, which are used to construct complex statements about the values of the variables. There are three fundamental operators that we have already seen in our party example. First, we have OR, which quantifies that either the left variable or the right variable has to be true. In order to distinguish it from the English word, logicians use the uppercase V notation and call it disjunction. Similarly, we have AND which asserts that both the left variable and the right variable have to be true. This is denoted similarly to an A, which is the first letter of AND. Finally, we have NOT, which states that the following variable has to be false. Note that the former are binary operators because they act on two variables, while NOT is a unary operator because it only operates on a single variable. It is also referred to as negation, and is denoted as shown. Additionally, we also allow for nested expressions. For instance, this expression quantifies that x1 has to be true, and either x2 has to be true or x3 has to be false. Going back to our party example, pause the video right now to see if you can formulate the problem as a Boolean formula. Here, we use xa, xb and xc to denote for each of our three subjects whether they come to the party or not. Armed with this knowledge, the satisfiability problem can now be stated simply. Given a Boolean formula, assign values to its variables to make it evaluate to true. But now you might be wondering, how hard is it to solve it? To get an intuition, pause the video now to see if you can find a satisfying assignment for this formula. As it turns out, the only solution in this case is x equals 0 and y equals 1. We can check that this is indeed a satisfying assignment by substituting 0 and 1 for the two values, resolving the nots, then the disjunctions, and finally the conjunctions. What was your thinking process when solving this riddle? You might have tried out all possible assignments. After all, there are only four of them. But is there a more efficient way to find a satisfying assignment? Let's first consider some classes of formulas that are maybe easier to solve. The formula that we just looked at is of a special kind. Note that it is a big conjunction of individual brackets. Each bracket is known as a clause. Clauses are big disjunctions of individual variables or their negations. Variables and their negations are called literals. To distinguish between the two cases, variables appearing negated are called negative literals while variables appearing non-negated are called positive literals. A formula like the one we just analyzed is said to be in conjunctive normal form, or CNF for short. You might now be wondering why a big conjunction of disjunctions, and not the other way around? To answer this, let's briefly look at what happens with our formula if we exchange ANTS with ORs. This time, we call the clauses AND clauses, to distinguish from the previous case. This formula is said to be in disjunctive normal form, or DNF for short. Do you think satisfiability is harder for CNF, or for DNF formulas? It turns out, one of them is solvable in linear time, while the other is one of the hardest problems in theoretical computer science to date. For a hard challenge, pause the video right now to see if you can spot which is which. 
For DNF formulas, finding a satisfying assignment amounts to finding a single and clause that can be satisfied, which requires that no variable and its negation appear together in the same clause. This can all be checked in linear time. Turning our attention to CNF formulas, what can we say about the computational complexity of the associated decision problem? Given a Boolean formula, is there a satisfying assignment? This problem is known as SAT, short for satisfiability. Notice that the problem is in NP, even for non-CNF formulas, because any satisfying assignment can act as a certificate. But still, finding a satisfying assignment seems very difficult. In fact, SAT is so difficult that it is an all-star problem, in other words NP-complete. That is, an efficient algorithm for SAT would yield an efficient solution to any problem in NP. This was proven in the 1970s, independently by Stephen Cook and Leonid Levin. SAT was the first problem to be proven NP-complete. For many, this marked the dawn of modern complexity theory. The proof relies on an alternative definition of NP involving non-deterministic Turing machines. By encoding the operation of the machine as a CNF formula, deciding whether the machine accepts, reduces to deciding whether some CNF formula can be satisfied. Notice how our party constraints are expressed in conjunctive normal form. So how are we going to organize our party now, given that even deciding whether a satisfying assignment exists is hard? All hope is not yet lost, since there is one observation that we have yet to use. Notice that in our formula, and, in fact, in most CNF formulas we have seen thus far, each clause consists of exactly two literals. The satisfiability problem for such formulas is called 2SAT. As it turns out, this time we are in luck, 2SAT can be solved in linear time, by reducing to finding connected components in a specially constructed graph. However, what if we want to add the constraint that at least one person has to attend the party? since otherwise it would be really sad. Formulating this constraint requires using a clause with three literals. Of course, just adding this constraint does not make the problem harder, but accommodating many three literal constraints can get tricky. For instance, this constraint says that Alice will only come if at least one of Bob and Charlie come. Sat, when all clauses consist of exactly three literals, is called three sat. Observe that a combination of clauses of size 2 and 3, like in our party example, is not allowed for 3 sat, but in practice, this is just a technicality. You might now be wondering how difficult is it to solve 3 sat. After all, 2 sat was easy, so 3 sat cannot be much harder, right? Unfortunately, it turns out that 3 sat is NP-complete, being just as hard as general sat with unconstrained clause sizes. It is often the case in complexity theory that an increase of 1, like from 2 to 3, can turn a polynomial problem into an NP-complete problem. To see why this is the case, we will show a reduction from SAT to 3 SAT. Let's begin with an example of a clause with more than 3 literals. We can split our clause of size 4 into two clauses of size 3 by introducing an auxiliary variable y. To see why this preserves satisfiability, note that either y or not y will be true. The clause containing the true literal will be satisfied automatically. For the clause containing the false literal, one of the other two literals will have to be true, meaning that the original clause of size 4 has to be satisfied. By doing this transformation repeatedly on our formula, we can get our formula down to clauses of size at most 3. But what about clauses of size 2? Pause the video right now to see if you can work out the required transformation. We proceed similarly by adding y. One of the two resulting clauses will be satisfied because either y or not y are true, and the other will model our original constraint. Finally, clauses of size 1 can be handled by doing this transformation twice, first bringing them to size 2, and then to size 3. In conclusion, any CNF can be turned into a CNF with clauses of size precisely 3 in polynomial time, so 3 SAT is just as hard as general SAT. Shortly after SAT has been proven NP-complete, many other problems followed, like clique, independent set, and vertex cover. Since there are already bidirectional reductions between those three problems, it suffices to show that 3 SAT reduces to any one of them, in order to show that all of them are NP-complete. This being said, we will now show a reduction from 3 sat to independent set, 
implying that independent set is NP-complete. We need to show that any Boolean formula can be modeled as a graph, such that satisfying assignments correspond to independent sets in the graph. For each clause in the formula, we introduce a cluster of three interconnected nodes, labeled with the literals in the clause. Observe that multiple nodes can be labeled with the same literal. Moreover, we add edges between any two nodes representing opposite literals. We claim that this graph has an independent set of size m, which is the number of clauses in the formula, if and only if the formula is satisfiable. In our example, this would mean an independent set of size 3. Why is it so? Since each cluster is a triangle, any independent set can use at most one node from each cluster. Therefore, an independent set of size 3 has to use exactly one node from each cluster. This node corresponds to the literal that evaluates to true from the corresponding clause. The edges between the clusters forbid us from using opposite literals to satisfy two clauses. For instance, the red edge forbids us from using x1 to satisfy the bottom left clause, and not x1 to satisfy the top clause, since that would mean that x1 has to be simultaneously true and false. Let's quickly summarize what we've learned in this video. First, we introduced Boolean formulas, which are a convenient way to model complex constraints that we want to hold. We introduced the satisfiability problem, asking for a way to make all the constraints hold simultaneously. Then, we discussed conjunctive and disjunctive normal form, which are common types of formulas used in practice. We saw that SAT, the satisfiability problem for formulas in conjunctive normal form, is NP-complete, by the seminal Cook-Levin theorem, one of the most important theorems in complexity theory. We then reduced SAT to 3 SAT, its variant where clauses have size exactly 3, which is also NP-complete. Finally, we reduced 3 SAT to independent set, showing it is also NP-complete. Many other reductions can be constructed, showing the completeness of a plethora of other problems like clique and vertex cover. This is a very vast field, so we have only scratched the surface. In fact, thousands of interesting problems in many different areas are complete. It is not unthinkable of that for each letter of the English alphabet, one can find an NP-complete problem starting with that letter. So here are a few examples to spark your curiosity. Thanks for watching this video.